For our project today, we're going to go ahead and expand this existing landscape bed into this area that you see here. We've got some materials from a previous job we're going to use up. We had some field stone, some different riprap rock, and some pulverized soil. One of the first steps, I like to lay out a real flexible garden hose. And that gives me an idea how that bed's going to turn out. It helps me visualize it in the early stages. I'll oftentimes use a grass killer and just leave the sod in place. I'm not a big fan of digging the sod out by any means. Once I've got that grass killed off, we'll go ahead and we're going to cut our edging line here. We could lay the boulders right on top where that dead area is, but I like to create just a, a little trench. That way they're going to seed in there a little bit better and not move. Hey Bandit. For our next step, we'll go ahead, we're going to take another run with the shovel here and just take out a little clump of sod, flip that over, that'll become part of the contouring. I had a run in with a power tool yesterday and the, the power tool one, so I'm not trying to be like Michael Jackson, but you might see me with one glove on. Trying to keep that clean, you know. And we'll go ahead and we'll cut it, those sod scraps, into smaller chunks. Make them a little easier to work with. You can see here that we've got a nice trench. Doesn't have to be perfect, level or not. We'll just pick different size field stone rock. If we've got a, a ridge up here a little bit, that'll just end up being a little bit smaller rock, something like this. That way they're gonna kind of look level. I'm also, when I do the edging, I'm paying attention to these crevices here. I want them to be as tight as possible. That way it's a little bit tougher for the grass to be able to sneak through there. The other thing about doing the trench there's no soil in here, so it's going to take a long time for that grass to try to sneak in there. You'll notice here, we've made our two contour piles away from this tree trunk. We've got one here, and we're going to burn this up as we connect to this. Reason for that, we don't want to be putting soil up against this bark on the tree. It can cause something called a crown rot, but that's an important step. Don't be putting soil or berms up on a tree trunk. It's not going to be a good consequence for the tree long term. We'll go ahead and chop these soil clumps apart a little bit. That's going to make it easier when we start doing a little bit of planting in here. Since we're connecting these beds, we'll go ahead and remove the existing edging line here. Might take a shovel to pry them out. Been in there several years. So since we are going to have a bit of contouring or raised elevation here, that's where you can use some of the larger boulders because we're going to add that soil then it'll just give us that higher ridge as we go through here. Look at this Ohio Buckeye behind us. Man, look at that red fall color. Isn't that something? If you notice here too, we're leaving these boulders higher on purpose as we come around with our edging, knowing we're going to be dumping soil and that's going to fill this up and create that contour going down. As we work along here, check out these lichens on these boulders. This is something we handpicked a bunch of these boulders out in western North Dakota. So shout out to Cheryl. Thank you. She's got a ranch out there. 
Field stone piles are quite common. Farmers pick them off their fields so they don't ruin their machinery. The nice thing about working with rock or field stone edging is you don't have to worry about being perfectly level. If those boulders start going up a little bit, then back down, that's where we can feather in some soil and create that contouring. So it's a very natural effect in the landscape. We've got our rock edging in all the way around our bed. So we'll clear out these existing boulders, set them aside. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and bring in fresh soil, go right over the top of those sod clumps, and then we'll bring those boulders back in to finish it off. We're going to hand shovel the rest of these areas. If we dump too much, you can overblow it, and then you got a bigger problem on your hands. It's a good idea to do some foot pressure on your soil. Tamp it down. So now that we've got our soil berms in place, we'll go ahead and throw in the rest of this field stone. This bed will be all rock for our final coating, but I also use field stone in mulch beds. If you take a look there, we've got some contouring going on and just put the field stone right in there. And in this bed, you can see we've used that rock edging, not only along the grass, but you can also use that rock edging to separate your mulch and your rock beds. Look at that. You may have noticed, I don't use black poly or fabric under any of our beds. I don't think it buys you more than a year of better weed control. So we'll deal a little bit with weeds in the spring from that fresh soil. I also like to do the rock work first on a lot of beds and then we'll come back in on a later date and we'll put our plants in. We've accomplished our goal. We've got a nice new extension on this bed with that rock edging. Works great. Look at that. We've got a lot of nice different sizes and textures of rock to create interest. Well, we used up most of the soil, but we didn't even come close to using up this extra rock we have here. Well, you know what that means. I guess we'll go find that garden hose. Nothing wrong with having extra rock on the driveway. Gives us a chance to do a whole new bed. New plants, the works. Thanks again for watching Garden Hike. We'll see you again next video.